high tide this morning of 2.94 metres at 11.07am and then a low tide this afternoon of 0.25 metres at 5 pm. See everyone, there's usually mountains here. Cumberland, we are hopefully booked in with Hamilton Island. If you could just confirm that you have that reservation made for us, please. We will head over there after 11 a.m. Over. Yeah, Park Peak, uh, when you're outside the marina or a few minutes away, uh, their call uh, channel is channel 68, uh, call sign Hamilton Island Marina. The concierge will come out and assist over. Copy that, concierge will stop us from crashing the boat into the marina. So uh, <laughs> thanks very much for that. Yeah, excellent, guys. Yes, uh, concierge will assist you. <laughs> Great. All right, guys. It's nice. Yeah. I kind of imagine that the American Northwest looks a lot like this. Maybe we should go there and find out for ourselves. Yeah, we should do. I've always wanted to go to see the America's Northwest. Yeah, but I watched Twilight and it was like a set. <laughs> you watched Twilight? I was yeah. Team Edward. <laughs> I was obsessed with that film. I remember when I met you, you were like weirdly, you were a fanboy of Twilight, which made me really kind of have second thoughts. I'm not <laughs> I don't know where that came from, the Twilight thing. You're, it's so unlike you. You hate all that stuff. So comment down below if you have a dark secret <laughs> that you get to reveal to the world. Yes, that's definitely your dark secret. <laughs> Closet yeah, Twilight got... Burn. What's the plan for today? So we're off to a place called Hamilton Island. There is um, a marina there that charge a ridiculous amount of money for a night's berthing. We'll charge the batteries up, just do all the things, you know, refuel, rewater. And um, explore Hamilton Island because it's meant to be lovely. And explore Hamilton Island. So there's actually a strong wind warning today. We are um, protected, really well protected at the moment from any wind from the southeast, but it's still pretty calm. You know, it's meant to be 30 knots and I reckon it's no more than 10 right now. So, it'll be interesting to see once we get out into the channel how and if that changes. We're not allowed to sail in uh, a strong wind warning situation. Uh, not with the charter company, they won't allow it. And honestly, you know, I'm not sure that we'd have the sails up anyway in 30 knots. Comment down below if you would. I mean, in a monohole, I definitely would, but in a catamaran, I don't know. Uh, I feel a bit nervous about it. That's probably my inexperience talking there. So if you're an experienced catamaran sailor, then do give us your thoughts. We're leaving Sid Harbour. It was an absolutely beautiful overnight anchorage. Really, really calm, really lovely and picturesque. Wow, my hair's doing all sorts of weird things right now. We had a very lazy morning, nice and calm and slow. It was very delightful. And even in this weather, it's still just so gorgeous and moody. I love it. And now heading to Hamilton Island. Should we go? I do want to talk a little bit while I'm doing this about um, collision avoidance. People with more experience, um, by no means am I putting ourselves anywhere near the top of that tree, but I think that after all these years of sailing, we're nowhere near the bottom. And I think we have a duty to try and educate other people that are new to this. One thing that I continue to learn is, is a collision avoidance and how to take good transits. I want to talk about you know, when you see a craft that is heading sometimes the same direction as you, but on a different course, how you avoid that collision. And the way that we always do it is by taking a transit. Now, a transit essentially means you take a, a bearing on where the other craft is to avoid collision. So, for instance, with me stood here, I am making a transit with the other craft, and the other vessel in this case was a motor sailor, but I'm taking a transit through the, the shrouds on the starboard side. Now, so basically I've got three points. That boat is framed in the window. Now, 
doesn't matter how far that boat is away, if I can see it through that window and the transit doesn't change, so it stays in that window and doesn't move, we're on a collision course. And I think that's pretty important to know so that whether you're a mile away or 500 meters away, and obviously if you're 500 meters away and a boat is doing um, like one and a half knots, it's different to a boat being a mile away and doing 25 knots as can happen with cargo ships. So it's really important that when you're learning your sailing skills to learn to understand your transits. So in the case, in the case, you put your hand up. I, I have a question. Tell me. So you said that you had three um, point, uh, three points. Yeah. What was the third? Was the island behind? No. So I'm point one. Yeah. Point two is another point on the boat that you're looking at. Yeah. And point three is the uh, the, uh, the the point that you're making. The boat. Yes. In the case of the transit that we're talking about here, in the case of that motorboat, the boat's framed in the window, and then I can see the motorboat passing in front of the window, so passing out of that transit I've taken, which means that we're not on a collision course. Another point that I always try and consider when there's a potential collision or the, the scope for collision. And I think, you know, looking at commercial shipping traffic, a lot of them have standing orders, and China taught me this, to not approach within 2,000 meters of another vessel. That's considered, in, you know, in aviation, for instance, with airplanes, they're not allowed to get within a certain distance of other, other but I think that a lot of shipping has the same rules where possible. Someone will be able to comment down below. Yeah, someone will comment if commercial vessels have a standing order about keeping a distance. Yeah. What is intuitive when you are considering a collision course is actually to change your course, to just either turn to port or starboard. I tend to find that if the best way for me to do it without spooking the other person because it's like sometimes you know when you you're in a confined space walking down a street and you kind of move up to some you know someone comes towards you and you both end up doing that weird little yeah. dance where you both move left then right and then left then right and you still can't get past each other <laughs> it, it happens in boats someone will try and port someone will turn to starboard and then you end up just zigzagging around and that causes problems the initial thing that i do is to assess is this boat moving faster than me or is this does this boat have the capacity to move faster than me and i just i just take the revs off and literally slow the boat down. And I've always done that because number one, as soon as you slow the boat down, it changes your transit. The other thing is, from a secondary point of view, the slower you are going, theoretically, the less damage you can cause if you do hit. So, you know, at no point have I ever sped up to avoid collision. I think, well, maybe once or twice. Um, and we got into a situation in Concarneur last year um, when we were entering the marina. Yeah. where um, a training boat, I think the, the whoever was in charge of training took his eye off one of the crew. We were the stand-on vessel. We went to go into the marina, to turn into the marina, it was tidal. And the crew just decided, no, we're gonna gun it and get in front of them. And it came pretty close to causing a collision. In that case, that would have been an insurance liability. We were clearly the stand-on vessel and we had started our approach, but we would have been the ones ending up T-boning the, the the training vessel avoiding uh, collisions taking transit is a really really good skill the other thing you can do actually is do the same on AIS if you've got an AIS vessel and you are painting the vessel so you basically target it and look at it look at its bearing to you we did this a lot off um, in the Gulf Stream sailing between Florida and the Bahamas you've got a tanker that's two miles away you can see nearest approach because AIS will give you that. But another way of doing it, which to me actually makes more sense, is to look at the information, look at its bearing to you. If its bearing is say 060 and it's five miles away and it doesn't change, you're on a collision course. If as you get closer, that bearing changes, you won't collide. So again, transits, either visual transits or taking bearings is a, is a clever little trick that you should have up your sleeve to avoid having to phone the insurance company because um, you have crashed into another boat. So what I was saying earlier about no wind, geez, I think we found it. Geez, we've got just to go with the dinghy, babe. Don't no, I know. Blow out there. This 
cockpit is so well protected that you don't realize how windy it is until like you poke your head out the side. It's like, it's very windy out there. But in here, it feels pretty, uh, pretty calm if it weren't for the roar of the engines. It would feel quite serene actually. We're just coming out to Hamilton Island now. It looks nice and we'll call the marina in a minute and um, their concierge service will come out and meet us. Yeah, good morning Hamilton Island. We have a reservation for this evening. We are one mile north of you and are requesting your concierge service to take us into the marina. Over. So we thought that the concierge service meant that they actually came on board and uh, took the helm and we thought that was a really good idea. Turns out no, they literally just guide you in, in a rib, and then you still have to dock up yourself. Um, but they take your lines, so yeah. It's blowing about 30 knots. Nick is, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just telling everyone that Nick's uh, helming. Um, this is gonna be interesting, so enjoy. So we're following the dunes along. Well, we're in. Actually, it's really well protected in here, so we tied up without any dramas at all, um, which was a bit of a relief. Uh, we're not on a finger pontoon, we're just on a long dock, so that made it a lot easier. And uh, yeah, here in Hamilton Island for the night. We've literally been here for less than five minutes and already two people have come up to us and said hello, which is just lovely, a very warm welcome. And by the way, if you ever do see us, in real life then please come up and say hi we'd love to chat and, and see you know ask you about your stories so um yeah come up and say hello to us if you ever do spy us anyway are we all good nick yes my love chicken love chicken so we are gonna go and explore the island and um i want to get my hands on one of those golf buggies but i was oh. I've been told that you have to put them in advance, so we're going to go and see if there's any availability. No golf buggies on the entire island. We were told that we had to book them, so that's fine. We've got a little free shuttle bus here. I had no idea where we were, where we were going. The bus driver was like, where are you going, love? And I'm like, couldn't tell you, wish I knew. And uh, here we are on Cat's Eye Beach, it's called, and it's the, um, I think the main kind of resort beach. We're just going for a little walk around. It's very pleasant. I think I'd be okayer with hiking if we had even like 5% of the required kit to go hiking. We definitely don't have the shoes. And our shoe situation is bloody awful. So for people that are into hiking, can you recommend hiking shoes? I don't know, we're not talking about Annapurna style, big like ankle support, just stuff that we can go for a walk when we get off the boat. Right. Like Merrells and stuff like that. I wouldn't say this is a particularly difficult hiking trail. It's but, literally yeah. just like a dirt track. There's a place called Hideaway Bay. I just uh, took the trail here. It's very, very picturesque. 
very beautiful. Lots of gorgeous little rocks strewn along the beach. It's lovely.